Hello to my high school theology class from my small town, Christian High School. It was very common to approach the topic of marriage with many different lenses. However, however, most people took the perspective of a traditional sense of marriage. So I would just like to discuss some sort of history on that topic and the realms of the emergence of breadwinner marriages, the emergence of gender roles, and the new theory of gender difference. So let's get right into it, pulled from the article of What Good Dads Get Away With by Dr. Darcy Lachman, which states that 65% of women still shoulder the majority of childcare. Now, this may not be shocking to some as they still take a very traditional approach to the roles of men and women in marriage. However, these ideas, though based in Christian values, may not date as far back as you think. There are, however, still very modern sectors of Christianity or complementarian Christians, as said by Octavia Scherda in her article, Much Ado About Christianity, and whereas they believe that men should rule over their wives and wives over their children. Men are ruling over their wives just as God rules over us. It is their ultimate job to be the supporter of that family. But again, where did this idea originate from, and why is it still such an important factor in the way our society functions today? For that, we have to look all the way back to the 1800s, which Stephanie Coots in A Marriage, A History, discusses a lot about in Chapter 9. We look at the 1800s and we begin to see this industrial revolution, and it is necessary to earn cash to support your family in this time. Before, it was very common to work on the farm, and roles between men, women, and even children were split pretty equally, as seen here. However, once men began to actually leave the home in order to make a living, we saw a sort of imbalance of power take place. And in order to remedy this balance, of in, in order to remedy this imbalance, uh, men took the approach of appeasing women more than actually fixing some sort of structural problem. Uh, therefore, they declared it was their God-given duty and God-given talent to work as a homemaker and serve the home and raise the children. Whereas for men, it was their God-given talent to leave the home and work and earn a salary. Now, this fitting it into this perspective of Christianity really made this idea catch on for a lot of people. And it, we saw how effective it was as it is still relevant even today. So this is called the new theory of gender difference, which can be split in a model as seen here. Women their half was to be at home, men, their half was to go to work. They were complementary and they fit together. Now, how can we still see this idea even in sectors of our society that aren't strongly Christian? Well, these roles have been so ingrained in our society that they are just the way that we function and we are socialized to fall into these roles. The National Bureau of Labor Statistics states that uh, married mothers are actually less, less likely to work than mothers of other marital status. Now, of course, this can be from a multitude of factors, but it still comes back down to the fact that when a father is present in the home, they are more likely to be making the salary. And an article in Psychology Today suggests that perhaps it's the fact that men are not as comfortable receiving this, you know, this position of less dominance as they are expected in society to take this dominant role, and therefore it's almost an offense for them not to. And it actually causes more unrest in a home if the women is to be the dominant, is to take the dominant role, as it kind of goes against these ingrained gender norms. Therefore, this idea, though it has roots in Christianity, is not a requirement of Christianity. And we place so much effort and we place uh, so much weight in these roles when really it was structured in society only to appease women when they felt underappreciated and that their work was no longer appreciated in a society of cash transactions, according to Stephanie Coots. So this is some really good food for, food for thought, and we have to question where these ideas have come from and why we so strongly hold on to them today.